Hello everyone, I'm Barkley Hunter, and welcome to part 3 of the MATLAB and Simulink tutorial for Best Robotics. In this episode, we'll be covering all the steps you need to create a fully operational Best Competition robot. We'll begin in the VEX Companion app by opening the library to access all of the blocks we'll need. and creating a new blank model for us to build the programs in. Now that this is set up, we'll start by building a basic steering system. The two types of steering systems that you can use for Best Robotics are an arcade style steering system that uses one joystick to control all robot movement or a tank style steering system that uses one joystick to control one wheel and the two joysticks together control the left and right wheels of the robot. These are the two most commonly used steering types because they're the simplest to use and the simplest to program. We'll start by building a basic arcade style steering system. For this we will need two joystick blocks to act as our input. One of these blocks will control the up and down directions of the joystick, while the other will control the left and right. Now to create our arcade steering system, we'll enter the Utilities tab and use the Arcade Module block. This is a very useful block that automatically formats the directions of the joystick into steering for the robot. You connect the left and right directions to the steer input and the up and down directions to the forward reverse input. Now to finish our steering system, we return back to the main page and choose two motor blocks. You'll assign these motor blocks to the same ports that they're plugged into on your VEX microcontroller on the robot. Then you'll plug your right wheel into the right output and your left wheel into the left output. This will create a fully usable arcade steering system. A tank style steering system is even more straightforward to program. We'll once again need two joystick inputs, but this time they will each control the up and down directions of the two different joysticks. Then we'll once again choose our two motors we will assign the motors to the correct ports and then we will connect the joysticks to the motors. You may want to make sure for the sake of easy driving that the right joystick is connected to the right motor and the left joystick is connected to the left motor. This is an operational tank style steering system. Now we can move on to button controlled functions. One example of a button controlled function would be to open and close the arm hand of your robot. To do this, we'll need a gamepad button input. You can choose whatever button that you wish to use on the controller. and then enter the Utilities tab and select a latch block. The latch block makes your, uh, makes your hand much easier to control because you only have to press the button once and it will constantly stay closed until the button is pressed again and then it will open back up until the button is pressed again and so on. 
Now, like we discussed in the last part, we'll go to the math library and select a gain block so that our zero or one output from the button translates correctly into an output for our servo that we would use for the hand. All motors and servos in the best kits have maximum and minimum inputs of positive 127 and negative 127. For a servo motor, it can only travel 60 degrees in either direction. So a positive 127 input would make it go positive 60 degrees. We will do that here for our example program. And remember to set your servo to the correct port on your VEX microcontroller. Now, another function that you need to handle for your robot is the arm. There are two ways to handle this. If you use an arcade style steering system, like we've shown before, then you can simply use your other extra joystick to control the elevation of your arm. This is easy because you can simply connect the other joystick to the motor that will control your arm. However, if you use a tank style steering system, you'll have to use the gates contained in the logical operations library to use buttons for the elevation of your arm. This is a much more complicated system, however. In the next and final part, we'll go over more tips and tricks including some tips on the logical operations library and using it to create button controlled systems like the one I was just discussing. We'll also look at simulation of your program and how to download your program onto your best robot once you have the proper hardware. Thank you for watching this Simulink and MATLAB tutorial for Best Robotics. Until next time, good luck working with what we've learned.